In this part, we're going to create four shapes that are overlapping each other with a black outline that goes around the entire image. So we will start by creating the shapes. First shape we're going to create will be the this uh, green rectangle. So we select the rectangle tool and just click and drag on the screen to create a rectangle. So the next shape will be a square. So you still use the rectangle tool, but you hold down the shift key um, to create a perfect square. So if you don't hold down the shift key, you will get some sort of a rectangle. But if you hold down the shift key, you will get a square. Next, we're going to create another rectangle. Uh, and then the, that's going to be the rounded corner rectangle. So first we create a uh, sharp corner rectangle and then we will go to the direct selection tool and click on that and we get our corner widgets that show up in the corners and we just click and drag one of them until we get the right kind of corner radius that we want and then lastly we will create the circle so we choose the um, ellipse tool and click and drag. Again, same as with the rectangle, if you do not hold down the shift key, you will get some sort of an ellipse. So if you wanna get a perfect circle, you wanna hold down the shift key. So holding down the shift key, we get a perfect circle. Always make sure that you let go of the mouse button before you let go of any keys that you're holding down, like the shift key, or sometimes you'll be holding down the option key or other keys together with you know the mouse button so the mouse button always gets released before the keys do okay so keep that in mind so now that we have all our shapes next thing I'm going to do is select each one of them with a selection tool and paint them with the colors that um, I have here so uh, we could just start with the circle and that is blue I usually, you could just choose a color from this um, spectrum down here, but uh, I like to use the sliders, uh, just a little bit more precise, and I'm used to it. So you could do it either way you want. First of all, we don't want the stroke anymore. So for the stroke, we'll click on none, and then we click on the fill box, and then uh, choose, either you could choose a blue color from here, uh, or you could use the sliders. Um, so next we will go to this uh, rectangle and again click on the stroke, select none and then click on the fill and we'll do a yellow color so it'll be like a hundred yellow, a little bit of magenta in there and then we'll do this square and again no stroke and the fill will be red. Um, that's usually about 100 magenta, 100 yellow. For the rectangle, no fit, no stroke, and the fill will be green, which is usually uh, cyan with some yellow in it. Sometimes it's 100, 100. Okay, so now we have all our shapes, and they're all painted the colors we want. And now we could just use the selection tool to put them in the places where they need to be. So now you could see that uh, they are not in the right layering, which is exactly what I wanted because I want to also show you how to layer these correctly. So what happens is the last shape that you draw will always be on top. So the order in which you draw the shapes will be the order in which they are layered. So we drew this green one first, then we drew that one, then we drew that one, then we drew that one. So they are in that particular order. So uh, if you want to change the order, there's a couple of ways to do it. And uh, one way is up here in the object arrange. So you have some options here, bring, bring to front, bring forward, send backward, send to back. So bring to front will bring the shape all the way to the front and send to back will send it all the way to the back and bring forward and bring backward, we'll do that one step at a time. In the case that we only have these four shapes, uh, it almost doesn't matter because 
if I want this yellow shape on top of the blue, that's only one step forward. So I could just use arrange uh, bring forward and that will do it. Okay. Or let me undo that. Or you could use arrange um, bring to front and that'll do the same thing. It'll bring it all the way to the front. I don't really like using these uh, commands options here uh, because uh, let's say if you have a lot more shapes in your image, like if you have a hundred or hundreds of them, which in my uh, work, I usually have a lot of shapes and um, in the future you will be making more complicated uh, images, which will have a lot more shapes. So what I like to do is use the cut and paste in front or paste in back commands. And I'll show you real quick how that works. So uh, I'm just going to, let's say, just to give you an example, I will send this yellow shape to the back. So that'll bring, take it all the way to the back. So if, I, if it's all the way in the back or whatever it is, but I wanna put it in front of the uh, blue shape so I will select that and I will go to edit cut. So that deletes it from my screen and keeps a copy of it in the memory. First, I want to select the, the shape that I want to paste it in front of and then just go to edit paste in front. Okay, so that I prefer this method. It's a little, it's uh one extra step, but if you have uh, a lot of shapes, it's actually uh, less steps. So now that we have all our shapes arranged the way we want them, then we use the selection tool and using a marquee selection, click and drag a marquee around all of the shapes so that they're all selected. Go to edit and copy so now we have a copy of these shapes in the memory of the computer and then go back to edit and choose paste in front so even though we do not see like there's anything happened on the screen what actually happened was a copy of those shapes was pasted in the exact same spot where the originals one were so i'll just move this out of the way to show you that there are two versions, two groups of these shapes, one on top of the other. You don't need to do that. I'm just moving it out of the way to show you what's happening. And instead of trying to put these back exactly where I moved them from, always use the uh, undo move. So now they're back there. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is use the Pathfinder. So go to Window and open up your Pathfinder palette. And all you need to do is in the Pathfinder, click on the Unite option. So what that does is it unites all of the selected shapes into one shape, which is what we want. And again, this I'm going to move it out of the way just to show you what's going on. You do not need to do that. All right, so we still have those original shapes in the back. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. Okay, so now all we need to do is, and this will be filled, it, it's filled with yellow because the topmost shape was yellow. And, but we do not want to have any fill on that shape, so we're gonna fill it with none. And we're going to stroke, we're going to use black for stroke and we're going to make it thick. Uh, in this case, it'll probably be, that's fine, about nine or 10 points. And also we want to have the stroke to be applied. You wanna align the stroke, not in the center, but you wanna align it on the outside, okay? Because as you can see, the center alignment, it gives you half the stroke will be on the inside and half the stroke will be on the outside and we want all of it to be on the outside so it's not cutting into the shapes. See how it's not doing that here? So we will choose the uh, align stroke outside and also I have rounded 
corners on my stroke here. So we will do the same here. And on the corner option, in your stroke palette, you want to choose round join. So that rounds those off.